Good evening, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to be with us here and join in together in prayer tonight. Psalm 14 says this, To the chief musician, a psalm of David. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand who seek God. They have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call on the Lord? There they are in great fear for God is with the generation of the righteous. You shame the counsel of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. And also from Luke chapter 6 and verse 27. I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also, and from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods and does not ask them back. Do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of of the Most High, for He is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Let us pray. O Lord, that your salvation would come out of Zion. Lord, your salvation has come to Zion. Your salvation has come to the whole world. And while the sons of men, Lord God, have from the beginning of time and continually, tragically, sadly today, still suppress the knowledge of you and say in, your heart, in their hearts that you are not there, there is salvation which has come out of Zion. There is the glorious hope of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is the beautiful and glorious Jesus teaching us to love, teaching us to love even our enemies, teaching us to give even to those who can't give back, teaching us to not to for, 
not to condemn or to judge, but rather to forgive and to be merciful. And Lord God, all of that backed up by what he did. Came and exemplified the highest of love in that he laid down his life for his friends. Let us heed the words of such a one, Lord God. Let us not let events in our world, though they should affect us and grieve us, let them not affect us beyond measure that we forget the wisdom and the greatness and the words and the instructions of our glorious Lord Jesus. Lord, in this world, a world that has a short future, a finite future, while we are here, teach us to redeem the time. Teach us to not waste time on pettiness and on bitterness and on fanning the flames and sowing the seeds of division and hardship and anger and rage. Let those of us who have been called and privileged to know you, Lord Jesus, as Lord and Savior, let us, Lord God, bring these really revolutionary teachings of yours to life. Teach us to love the ones that don't love us. Teach us to be friendly to the ones who maybe we perceive not to be friendly with us. Help us to see your created image in every other one. Help us to show the mercy that we have received. Help us to show the grace that we preach and depend on. Help us to speak with a kindness and a gentleness and an uplifting spirit that we so often again and again and again get from you. Most Holy Lord God, Almighty Father in heaven, you are the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Israel. You are our creator, the one who has given us life and everything that goes with it. You are holy, you are righteous, you are perfect, you are loving, and you are kind and gracious to those who humble themselves before you. Thank you, Lord God, for all of your goodness in our lives. Thank you for the truth of the gospel above all things and the promise of everlasting life and the forgiveness of sins, the sealing of your Holy Spirit, eyes open to recognize your glory and to understand your word and be built and edified by it. Thank you that you've defeated, defeated death. And there is no more sting in death. Thank you, Lord, that you have visited us with this salvation. I pray, Lord God, that your mercy would be upon our nation. It's so easy to find fault here and find fault there. It's so easy to point at this, point at that, listen to this, listen to that, and so show this to be wrong, that to be wrong, this to be wicked, this to be evil. Help us to look at ourselves, Lord God, please. Help us to look inside ourselves. Help us to see where we're not like Christ in our hearts and with our words and in our actions. Forgive us and help us to devote our lives anew, not everyone else's, mine, to being like you, precious Lord Jesus, beautiful, 
Lord Jesus. Lord, in the midst of some of the trouble that's happening in various spots in our country, I pray, Lord God, that your gospel would be preached even in the midst of the hardest and the worst of scenes. That people would come to repentance when they're confronted with you and your greatness and your holiness. And that they would come to faith in the gospel in our Lord Jesus Christ. And they would be saved and their hearts would be changed, Lord God. We pray that your holy name, Lord God, would be exalted and glorified. We pray that you would grant eyes to people then to see your beauty in others. That love would well up and prevail and that healing would come. None of us can justify ourselves. You, Lord Jesus, are just. We need you. still a pandemic going on, Lord God. The fact that it's pushed from the headlines doesn't mean it's not still there. Help us, Lord, to keep our eyes open and to be wise. I pray, Lord God, for the people of these towns around here that, Lord, we would all be wise and smart in our actions and loving and consider the well-being of others. Be smart about, uh, smart about keeping our distance and observing guidelines that are for the preservation of the lives of our fellow citizens, Lord God. Help us to be, as Christians, a good testimony. We do pray for leaders like our President Trump and Vice President Pence and Governor Murphy, Mayor McCormick here in Woodbridge, and all the mayors in the towns around and people at every level, Lord, of leadership. They have their authority from you. I pray, Lord God, that these people would look to you. They'd humble themselves before you. Truly, Lord God, be humble and look for wisdom from you, and put their faith in you, Lord Jesus, and help us to live quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and reverence. In that quiet, Lord, in that quietness of character, when you do give us the chance to speak, help us to speak the truth in love with grace towards all. Words always with grace, seasoned with salt, that we may know how we should answer every man. We continue to pray for the work that happens in hospitals and clinics and nursing homes everywhere, Lord God, and other facilities where people are still working hard and struggling and trying to care for those who are sick. Help them, Lord. Thank you for the work that they do. We pray for those in our family, Lord God, our families who are touched by this disease that's going around. We pray for our church people, Lord God, that you would be gracious and protect. Help us to remember each other and to love one another and, and to represent you, Lord, well in all that we do. Lord, I pray that above anything else, shining through it all, would be the truth of the gospel. Your word says that the gospel and the ministry of it is as if you were pleading with the world through us. Help us, like the Apostle Paul, to determine to know nothing among our fellow man but Christ and him crucified, and share the love and the grace of and the freedom and the glorious future that is in the gospel and help us in the church to exemplify the real love and unity that there is among all people of your creation who love you. Started tonight, Lord God, by reading the psalm that opens with the fool has said in his heart there is no God. The wise recognizes you and fears you and humbles himself before you and trusts in you, and believes you, and worships you, and serves you, and honors you, and glorifies you. Almighty God and Father, our glorious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and your presence, you, the Holy Spirit, in us, we worship you, 
We bless you. We praise you. Please, Lord, help us to be strong. Help us to give of ourselves in your service. Help us to be a conduit of your love and your grace and your mercy. Let the effect of our lives on others be to show you to be beautiful and wonderful and glorious, that people might be drawn together around you, our Lord Jesus. You, your gospel, you are the hope of this world, the only. Blessed Lord Jesus, we give praise and thanks to your holy name tonight. Fill the hearts of my brothers and sisters with love and strength and courage and peace. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Well, everybody, God bless you. Thank you for taking the time to come and be part of this tonight. We'll be back right here on Facebook Live in a couple of nights, uh, 7 o'clock on Thursday night. Won't be the regular Bible study. We're going to have the Lord's Supper. So get your pieces of uh, cracker and your cups of juice ready, and we'll gather around and proclaim and remember and worship the Lord for the great sacrifice that he made for us. Good night, everybody.